When Jay responded to our overclocking by posting multiple of his own scores in succession, he complained about not having enough time for this. I told you, I gotta put this away. I don't have time. I don't have time to screw around with this. Well, Jay, if you don't have enough time for this, you can call me motherfucking Father Time because I'll make time all day to beat your scores. And that, my friends, is what we just did. So, Jay, I would like to welcome you to our current high standing at time of filming. So right now what I'm looking at, if it's not different than what's on the screen, is a 15,875 graphic score and a 12,433 point CPU score, which beats Jay by several hundred points. Before that, this video is brought to you by PowerColor's RX580 8GB card, which is marked down to $200 with rebate starting September 29th on Newegg, and that is for the 8GB model. If you're looking for a mid-range video card for gaming on high settings, consider PowerColor's 8GB RX580 that we linked below. The card also comes with three free games, including Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Star Control, and Strange Brigade. While supplies last, learn more at the link below. Jay, the one with the, the most golden of all the golden samples. Jay is the favorite, apparently, among manufacturers, or just gets very lucky, and has an insane CPU that doesn't even need to be delitted. Ours is delitted. Not only is it delitted, but we put it in 50 pounds of ice. You salty, Jay? You salty yet? Because that lowers the freezing point of my bucket of ice. That's what we're working with right now. We have the CPU radiator dunked in ice. We have, excuse me. Well, there's a 560 millimeter GPU radiator in there. Take my word for it. And, uh, there's a water, a pond pump in there, that's what that is. And we have that hooked up to fairly condensation proof uh, blue shop towel. We'll see how long that holds, we might lose a part, but it's been good so far. And I have to thank Richie and Buildzoid for being patient with me while I walk through this whole process. So, Jay, your turn. Find the time for it if you can. I don't know, I did. I didn't seem to have a problem finding time for it. So uh, our biggest limitation now will soon become power. And uh, that's something we can just run extension cables for or something, I don't know. But for the score we have of presently 15,242, you know, Jay, I, I think you can do it. I believe in you. But seriously, Jay has done some really crazy good overclocking on the GPU side. I had a few tricks up my sleeve for this one. We might reveal in this video, I don't know. We filmed like, we filmed how many gigabytes? We filmed 250 gigabytes of all of this crap for the last three days. So there's the build, there's the ice bucket, there's the overclocking. So I have no idea how we're gonna split the videos, but I want the score to go up sooner because I, I just, I, I want Jay to see it. I wanted to keep him up at night like this kept me up at night when I saw his scores go up. Uh, so Jay, thank you very much for participating. I'm sorry to say that it's over, but it was fun while it lasted and I'll see you in California. Uh, assuming, well, I guess you did threaten to fly here and cut my hair in my sleep, so. So if I actually lose, I'm gonna fly to North Carolina, I'm gonna break in and I'm going to take clippers to him while he sleeps. And then that's not creepy at all, but it's totally worth it to win this battle, whatever. Maybe I'll see you here. Brain scissors, strong ones. Uh, okay, so I don't know how we're gonna cut this, but we'll have other videos uh, talking about the build process. I'm gonna try and beat the score myself. We're going to do a live stream before I tear all this down. Assuming nothing dies tonight, we're gonna do a live stream showing it off one final time before I tear it down. We're gonna put the time for that on the screen now. So if you tabbed away, check back and look at the screen. That's gonna have the date and the time for the live stream before we tear this beast down and it will be no more. So Jay, if you post a better score, I'm going to assume it's only because I gave you all of the ideas that you used to beat our score because your hardware is by and large superior in every single way. So all you have to do is muster up the skill, I guess, to do the rest of it. And uh, I mean, we did everything. Uh, anyway, if you don't know who Jay is, Jay's Two Cents is a channel. We've had a lot of fun working with Jay on this and a friendly competition on overclocking. Dare Bauer jumped in jerk and so the fun will soon be over for all of us but you can check him out on youtube as well anyway uh i don't know we'll transition to some other part of the video or something so for the bench hardware this is kind of a crazy configuration first of all big shout out to rubbermaid who didn't sponsor us and have no idea what we're doing 
<laughs> their 78 quart cooler. I bought this at the local hardware store. We filled it with a lot of ice. Uh, I'm sure the gas station doesn't know why we kept going back and buying ice either. But we've got a 360 thermal take rad in here with, uh, this was really not meant to be in here originally. And then we have a uh, 560 rad down there. Ideally this would be horizontal, not what it is here. It's gonna get air stuck in it and it's, it's got issues where the water can't really flow through it. We have a pond pump in there. So that's that part of the build. The motherboard is an EVJX299 Dark, which is the best overclocking board I've worked with. So X299 Dark for uh, our 7980X eCPU. Yes, haha, very funny, you know the meme. Uh, so that's, that's our setup there. G-Skill Trine Z memory that I've overclocked pretty heavily, tightened the timings really heavily, so that's doing well. The VRM is kept cool by built-in fans. We have a, uh, an EK Furious fan here, EK Furious fan there. They're like 2,500 RPM. So that's cooling the VRMs and the VRAM for the cards, which I've completely surgically taken apart and re put back together again. So we have a uh, blue shop towel everywhere. I shorted the shunts on the cards with liquid metal. I was gonna solder some three milliohm shunts on there. Uh, and if Jay responds, maybe that's what I'll do next. But I, I had to do something that I could do without taking everything apart. And that was put liquid metal on it. I couldn't get a soldering iron in there. So we have uh, hard mods as an option next, but anyway. That's the, the video cards are there. We have an Asus one, we have an EVJXE Ultra on a riser card, Asus ROG Strix, which is a beast of an overclocker. We have to get rid of the FE card. Um, this is cooling all those. We have this as exhaust blowing all the hot air that way, which uh, provides some pressure on the right half of the VRMs of this. And then a Noctua 3000 RPM industrial fan in the back, forcing air through, uh, just brute force through all of the shop towel and everything, cooling the bottom VRMs and VRAM and those, by the way, were running about 40 degrees Celsius, maybe, uh, and most recently about 35. And that's because everything around it is freaking freezing. So that's, that's the setup for the most part. Uh, we have EK supremacy blocks on the GPUs. We didn't do blocks on the, water, on the VRM because it's just totally irrelevant. You can cool it with air. And I, other than that, we have an AX1600i Corsair power supply that's done very well with all of this. Uh, and then a, uh, I think that's it. I think that's everything. I think that pretty much covers it. EK supremacy block on the CPU, a lot of shop towel. The whole goal of this is to stop air from hitting metal things because that's when, or anything, honestly, because that's when condensation will form, including the tubes, which are uh, the EK ZMT tubing. So there's a zero maintenance tubing. These were specifically chosen, the black tubes, which are mostly covered up now, but there's one down there. These were specifically chosen so that we could uh, help insulate them, keep the cold in, and, and reduce condensation concerns. Then we have a thermocouple K-type hooked up with one in the tank and one in the loop for the GPU. So we're at 0.9 degrees in the tank, and we're at 4.0 in the loop uh, Celsius, of course. So that's our test bench. OK, so for part of the settings, we're using the hotkeys. I'm going to give away pretty much all the secrets here. So Jay will now beat us by using the secrets, and because uh, he has better hardware. So that's all he needs to do is use the tricks. But anyway, this is what we're doing. I am setting the clocks on the memory and the core based on the current load of TimeSpy, which I've checked with a current clamp meticulously through the whole benchmarking process. So I know when it goes up and down in current requirements and I can adjust the clocks to counter that uh, based on the workload. So all we're doing is we're just gonna change the clocks for each test. So like right now I'm dropping to an offset of uh, 1180 on the memory down from 1240. So I was on 1240 offset memory for the first test. Now we're down to 1180 and we were on a 170 offset core for the first test. And now we're at an offset of, I think 165. And then this test, uh, eventually we're going to hit a spot where the current again changes the current requirements. So once we get there, I'm going to increase the frequency by an extra 10 megahertz to give me some extra score while we can get it in this part of the bench. So just waiting for that. And then we also have a part later where we're gonna have to drop the memory frequency and the core frequency to try and, uh, and, and counter artifact and that'll happen on the memory. So the CPU test, I'm dropping everything on the GPU. GPU's done. It's not really gonna impact the results of this test. It's entirely CPU. And so we're dropping the GPU so we don't have to worry about supporting that overclock anymore. It is no longer a concern. Now we're just focusing on supporting the CPU overclock and I just changed the mesh ratio. So it's gonna crash. But before when we were at 34 mesh, uh, it was stable. Now I was pushing 35. I don't think I'm gonna get it, but I wanted to give it a shot. 
But that gives us a good opportunity to get back into BIOS and see our other settings. So we're in the EVGA BIOS, and what I've got right now going on, previously I could not get over 4.8 gigahertz at all. Like we had the first four cores at 49, everything else 48. So that's why Jay was, well, I don't know how his CPU score was low originally, but uh, that his, his CPU clocks of 5.0 to 5.1 were supporting a higher graphics score in a significant way because the CPU was able to better keep up with it. So now we're at 51 for the first two cores. That pushes, so for uh, rendering tasks, GPU bound things where you have draw calls, this first two cores at a higher frequency will help keep up with the GPU, whereas the rest are at 5.0. So we're at five gigahertz for those. The stable mesh ratio was 34, not 35, although I did just try it. And then uh, everything else, VIN 1.95, vCore 1.45, vMesh 1.38. Uh, VCCIO was 1.33 before I increased the uh, mesh. And then SA is 1.185. I was running lower before, 500 on core offset. This is where we've done a lot of tweaking, so I spent about a whole day on this. This is a G-Skill Trident Z Black 3600 megahertz kit. They're sending a better one in too, but we, we pushed this one to 4,000 megahertz, and it's on 1.85 dim, V-DIM. Uh, I've got 15, 15, 15, 28. I kind of was stable on 26, but dropped it for more stability on 28. Uh, 5, 5 for the RRDs. We're at 38 for FA. Uh, TFA, we're at 1 for command rate. And then all these, so uh, TRFC, we're at TWR is 20. TRFC is the refresh cycle for the memory. So this, you want this number to be low. This is how quickly it refreshes the memory to, uh, to grab whatever it needs to get next. And so we, we lowered that quite a bit from stock. Uh, refresh interval, REFI, this you want high because you want the memory to retain its data for absolutely as long as possible without ever refreshing it in benchmarking. So we've maxed that out. Uh, we have CKE6, we've dropped uh, WWDD or uh, w, RD, WDR to seven, RWDD to seven, uh, RWSR to seven. And I'm trying to get these lower, but that's kind of where they were stable on this kit of memory. Uh, we've turned off some of the features of the CPU. I'm not going to go through all those right now. And that gets us to where we are. And I just set it to 5.1 gigahertz as well. So we're going to give that a shot before closing out uh, everything. But so that's it. That's, that's the score I got for now. Back to you, Jay, I guess. Uh, I'd really rather you don't get up from this one, though, because I have things to do. But I'll always make time for you, Jay. It's, you got me right here. Right here in the heart, I think, is what humans call it, when you talked about your time constraints. And I feel for you, but I am eternal. So I'll come back whenever you respond. Uh, thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats or any of our other products, like our shirts. If you like these videos, I want to support them because, holy crap, this took a lot of time, as Jay said. And uh, it's very expensive to produce this kind of content. So help us out if you feel like you can. Otherwise, check back for the live stream. That's the best way to help us if you don't want to spend money. And we'll post again that date and time somewhere in the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.